months or two months for you to get the visa. Once you are in the government, are you going to work on that? Thank you for the question, Mr. Benjamin. What we assist is that one can submit his visa application and he can stay for two or three months. Once you know he's a businessman, he has a lot of activities. We also want to change this kind, this bureaucratic way of treating people who are interested to go in Angola, you know? Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at 1873FM, hashtag 1873FM. The Honorable Olomisa. Uh, Bandu Olomisa is the uh, leader of the United Democratic Movement, a uh, former deputy minister in the Mandela cabinet in 1994-96 in charge of environment and tourism. Leadership is a very broad uh, topic and subject. The important thing is that uh, when you are a leader, so you need to understand the rules of the game of that particular field you are operating in. And, and Honorable, when you look at uh, conversations between uh, Mandela uh, and yourself. Did he ever tell you about his experience with President Mubarak of Egypt? That's what I know about. Where did you get that from? <laughs> you, you see, when you happen to be a member of the I, I, I suspect that uh, you guys, you must be working for a national intelligence agent. <laughs> we, 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 need to, we need to screen I, 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 this. I, 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 I wish I was working for the national intelligence. Well, where do you get this high-level course? <laughs> <laughs> It is uh, the 1873 FM, your platform for open and frank, honest conversations in as far as issues that matter. And if you just tuned in, well, thank you for making the 1873 FM your channel of choice. And we continue uh, with the uh, conversations that matter in as far as securing the future that we all want collectively. And uh, one key aspect of uh, issues that matter is. Uh, when we talk of the issue of uh, citizenship, when we talk of responsible citizen, when we talk of active citizen, and uh, more importantly, what is it that uh, makes one a responsible citizen? And when we talk of uh, active citizenship, what are the key ingredients that actually uh, make one an active citizen? So. On that note, uh, joining me in conversation, I happen to be joined by Angela James as Nandi Burster this morning. Good morning, Angela, and good morning, Nandi. And uh, thank you so much uh, for making time to be on the 1873 FM uh, this morning. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to Nandi. Good morning to the listeners. Um, we're in, can you believe it, Tanashi week 10, um, and been having the most amazing dialogues and discussions around what active citizenship is all about. Um, and just delighted to have Nandi with us this morning um, and that she's taken time out to spend time with the listeners. Um, Nandi, um, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and um, how we get to, to connect on the hashtag of this week, which is Choose to Give. Um, we've been progression in terms of going, creating the context for responsible citizenship we then moved into looking at what what it makes what makes up a responsible citizen, and then from there moved into how do we take this out into the world? And part of that moving out into the world again is around um, creating and building a culture of um, of giving, a culture of uh, not just uh, we had choose to care right at the beginning of the series, um, and giving comes off the back of caring. So. Tell us a little bit about yourself um, and how the whole question of hashtag choose to give fits into you and fits into your frame of reference. Thank you so much for having me, Angela, and also for creating such a platform to have this dialogue. The hashtag choose to give is such a powerful one. My own life, I actually go way back, I said to study genetics out of everything. And after reading about a racial incident that took place at the University of the Free State, I moved everything, was going to study at Stellenbosch, and decided I really want to understand. Because I grew up, I mean, white, middle class, very privileged. And when I read that headline, I didn't understand why there's still racial tension with people my age. And it just shows the ignorance that I grew up with being so privileged and taking that time it really shaped my whole life and everything that I choose to do thereafter 
I dedicated time to study politics, became really involved in giving back, into mm. creating a platform where people are heard. And with the hashtag, so currently I'm just enrolled to study again, and I'm also actively working with various NGOs in and around Johannesburg area. Specifically, my passions are regard are in line with promoting religious tolerance um, and also securing that people have a voice and that they are heard. So with the hashtag choose to give, as I mentioned, is a powerful one and one that's definitely needed in today's time because understanding that I give and realizing that it's not a loss to myself, but rather a unification process, that itself is a mind shift that needs to happen under more citizens. Mm. Because currently when we hear the word give, immediately we want to say, I don't have enough already. Yep. But by, by that thinking that I'm giving, somebody else will give too, which will allow me again to benefit from it. Mm. Yeah, that is a sense of a community that we need to nourish more and more in today's time. That sense of community is so inherent in African culture already, um, and yet we've moved so far away from it. I mean, we were both privileged to hear Anna Marie talk about Ubuntu on Friday. We 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 came together, and she's going to be featured um, in one of the shows in about two weeks' time. Um, but you know, I think the thing for me, and when you're talking about it, we talk about this as though it's new. It's, and I know you're not inferring that, but in general conversation, this whole question around giving is new. It's not new. It's as old as old as time. Um, and the whole question of, and it's not about giving and taking, which is a Western construct. It's about giving and mm. receiving. Um, mm. So it has a whole different connotation to it in the sense that it's not based on scarcity. It's not based on greed. It's based on um, a whole different value set around being open-hearted. Um, and I'm not saying I, I in a, in a, I'm not being trapped when I say it's based on an energy of love. Um, yeah. It's moving into that uh, that whole different mindset and consciousness of abundance. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Carry on. No, no. I was about to say, I just 100% agree with you. The fact that Ubuntu was born on African soil just mm. shows that it... We as Africans, we understand like how much we need one another. And so much of society has become modernized and definitely influenced by Western culture and having to be reminded like, oh, let me hold on to what is mine. And like you said, mm -hmm. it's not giving is not a new construct. But mm -hmm. we've fallen victim of fear, I think, mm -hmm. to say, oh, I'm losing trust in the system that's being created to protect us. Mm -hmm. And rather, we should be reminded of, listen, we are united in this. We all want the same thing. We all want to live in peace, harmony, for all of us to flourish together. And if you remind that the person next to me has the same intention as I, then definitely you would make decisions with, the, with your neighbor in mind once more instead of just yourself. Mm. Uh, it actually leads me to a really interesting comment that I heard this morning on a Deepak Chopra the, a meditation that I was listening to. And he was talking about the fact that if you look to nature, nature doesn't hoard. Nature doesn't understand mm. what hoarding is. So if we're living our lives in line, uh, alignment with natural law, um, the whole hoarding, grasping, grabbing, greed, um, all the, those elements that link to scarcity are, are going completely counter to natural law. And there are individuals out there who don't want people to be in a space of peace and harmony. I mean, I was just looking at some of the commentary, and I'm not going to mention any names because it's not a political platform that we're coming from anyway. But I was just looking at some of the commentary about the Springboks having won the rugby on Saturday, the negative commentary mm -hmm. on the Springboks having um, won the rugby on Saturday and all the old messaging and wording that's coming up around mm -hmm. it's still an apartheid sport and it's still, you know, all this is kind of implying the tokenism and taking away from the actual real um, and the realness, the rawness of that one on Saturday in the sense that it, for me it was really around this is what the Rainbow Nation is about. Yeah, men coming together as a symbol of 
the country, from all walks of life, from the poorest of the poor to people who've come from privilege, and yet they came together believing about something and believing in something far bigger than any of them than could contemplate themselves. And that sheer humility. And then you've got people who come, uh, come up and criticize because they still want to garner fear. Um, I don't yeah. understand it. It's not part of my reality. I don't want to pay it any mind and any, give it any more energy and attention to it. But I think it's coming back to what you're saying is that in giving, it becomes a unification process as, a part, mm. as opposed to a loss. And that's quite a concept to contemplate. I think our discussion it might seem very ideal for people, this whole concept of responsible citizenship. Many people can ask, but why? Mm -hmm. Especially in South Africa, where's the reality of statistics that we read and the reality that we face daily? Um, mm. However, we must remember and remind ourselves too on a daily like how you said of nature, that was such a beautiful um, symbol to you, but also that light will always triumph darkness. And it takes but a match to light up a dark room. Mm. You are never too insignificant. No, um, no effort or action of you is too small. My friends always, <laughs> they poke fun at me as I'm the person who would tell a who would tell another, say, pick up that piece of paper. And they're like, mm. leave it, Landy. You're in any way walk. Look how much papers are lying on the street. Like, why do you want to go and, like, engage in a discussion about this now? But mm. I think we've fallen trapped into habit, thinking that we can't make a difference anymore. Mm -hmm. That, oh, it's somebody else's responsibility. And that rather, we need to take ownership of that once more. How you said take back what we've always come to know, um, what we grew up with, is to give, to know, uh, to know that, listen, we really are united. And what we've seen this weekend, I think each citizen must be encouraged after this weekend to know that we are unified, no matter how in the slightest of way, it's not just you operating as an island. Mm. Very much so. I want to kind of shift the conversation a little bit and we'll bring it back to what we're talking about now. And that is the work that you do around not-for-profits um, and really looking at the significance of the importance of and the reason why non-profits exist in, I mean, there's a proliferation of them. And it's, you know, if people can't get jobs, many people, if they can't get jobs, want to start up a not-for-profit. Um, sometimes it's not for the right reasons, but that's not the point. The point is, is that the not-for-profit segment within society plays a vital, vital role. Mm -hmm. um, and the, we had yesterday we had Samantha Barnard from SANPO Association, and she was speaking quite a bit about that. But I think the way I want to go with this with you is the difference between activism and advocacy, and why mm -hmm. for me advocacy is becoming more and more important rather than activism. What is your take on that? I definitely agree with you that activity is more important. It, I think every person wants more should be involved. Why I'm so driven to be involved with various NGOs, it, it creates a sense of fulfillment in me that you can see it's outcome driven, it's really impacting people's lives and also that space that's created to serve people, I really want it to flourish. There's many times where there are lack of resources, um, results maybe were, or resources were mismanaged, which led to um, unde undesirable results. But to help these NGOs and to say, listen, let's re-strategize, let's look at it again, reminding one another of um, why an NGO was started. And to be active, um, or activism, it, activism again, rather than, act, oh, what was the other one that we said? Sorry. Activism, um, versus activism versus advocacy. Advocacy, there is a word. Sorry, it slipped my mind completely no, now. That's okay, don't worry. Activism, <laughs> activism being so important for individuals too, because it's a way how your voice can be heard how you can actively make it make a difference and see results. 
um, once again being remi- being reminded that listen, my my efforts are not insignificant in the slightest. Mm. What I'm hearing you saying underneath, or um, the, the two threads that are coming through from the two different aspects of the conversation this morning, is that embedded underneath responsible citizenship and engagement in civil society is a whole question of two things that are emerging. The one is my voice and, and allowing my voice to be heard. And the second thing, in, in allowing my voice to be heard and taking action, is a sense of significance. I derive my sense of significance and that fulfillment of my sense of purpose by being of, by choosing to give of myself. Oh, I actually quite like that. <laughs> I don't have to remember what I just said. Derive my sense of, in, of significance. And but, found my yeah. voice. Um, I was just going to elaborate yeah. maybe uh, and then this thought can come back. But as somebody that's relatively well young, um, we've, it's so important for you to want to be seen in a digital age where people grew up where your whole life can be documented. You want to show the best of it all to people. It's important to still see, oh, my life is significant. I've seen many peers of mine struggling with depression. Like I said, mm-hmm. in a South African environment, um, struggling to get work, uh, struggling with violence, um, having faced a lot of um, a lot of conflict in their lives, seeing horrific things, and yet to know that you can make a difference. But that all starts by grasping the concept that um, that we are one. That this life and my impact today will surpass something greater than my lifetime, even if it just maybe sparks a thought in somebody else. And you never see anybody pick up a piece of paper again, how insignificant that might seem in the greater um, picture of it all. But even if you don't ever see it again, and not to um, provoke conflict, I think also Mm -hmm. comment sections on Twitter and on Instagram and these types of platforms, um, there's no responsibility attached to it, and that's not responsible citizenship. We must be accountable for our actions, for our words that we speak, by realizing that this holds power. Mm. And also, this is the power to unite people and the power to influence something greater than like how I said, that can surpass even my lifetime. Mm. Well, you know, when we start talking about what we're looking, you know, the whole platform that that a lot of the work that um, certainly I've been doing through Aligned over the years has been around the next seven generations to come. And we're not talking decade generations, we're talking lifetime generations. It comes from a Native American Indian, probably, uh, not probably, uh, Native American Indian prophecy around mm. um, that whatever thought actions um, we deploy or, or we adopt, they will impact for the next seven generations. And it's a very mm-hmm. sobering thought when we think about what world are we creating for the next seven generations. It's not just for now. And many of the things that we're doing, we won't see in this lifetime. Yeah. Um, and it's about and getting out of ourselves and starting to look at the future implications of our choices that we're making today. Definitely. And just because we're not going to see the results of that does not make it any less significant. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, part of what responsible citizenship is for me about. It's not about being attached to the outcome. It's being a part of a process that is going to be looking at a better world. Definitely. I 100% agree with that. My dad, he really likes gardening. And I remember from a uh, a young age, he used to tell me that if you plant a tree, reminding me of that, that if you plant a tree, you believe in tomorrow. And that, for me, is so beautiful because he said, I might not sit in the shade. And I remember how he didn't measure me against the wall. I always had to go and stand next to trees that we planted together to say, where, where am I fitting now to this? And mm-hmm. for me, also just to realize that even I won't benefit fully from planting this mm-hmm. tree. Um, as it takes numerous of years, I won't see it in full bloom, maybe. But I know, and he's hoping too, that my kids one day can play under this tree or something that we planted together. So, mm. 
So, yeah, we, you know, kind of tying us all up into a bundle is around one of the ways in which people can demonstrate their responsible citizenship is by actively engaging and getting involved with the work that NPOs are doing as volunteers, committing some of their time to take, and, and yesterday afternoon when we were speaking with Geraldine Tina, she, she was talking about how it takes us out of ourselves mm-hmm. and how people can change their life state by being involved in things that, that the NGOs are doing. There's such a variety that people can, can match themselves to some of the, the NGOs in terms of the interests and do some mm-hmm. good. Um, and that it really is around, I serve myself by serving others. And it sounds yes, selfish, but it's not that sense of, of entitlement selfishness. It's around mm-hmm. becoming a healthy, contributing human being Serving my higher self by serving others. Um, and you can go to any of the religions around the world. I know you work with interfaith. Mm. You can go to any of the religions around the world, and that same lesson of the golden rule applies equally to everybody. Um, it comes out of Absolutely. every one of the world's major religions. And that fundamentally what, is what is at the cornerstone of responsible citizenship. Mm. What's beautiful to see is with the interfaith dialogue sessions that um, I've been involved with, is always every time the religious leaders would agree, none of us around this table, there's no one that can say, I do not want peace. And also mm-hmm. how they always end off a discussion by, by saying that we are one together here and understanding that importance of the weight that they as religious leaders also carry in society. Mm-hmm. But how you mentioned, and I really want to encourage every citizen, think about what you like to do. And go and find an NGO in that. It doesn't cost anything. Um, we all say, especially in Gauteng area, and I think anywhere else, we like always like to say, I don't have the time. Create time for yourself. It doesn't have to be daily. It doesn't even have to be weekly. But see it as also an investment for yourself, something that you enjoy doing because it really is fulfilling to see mm. you caring about something that you find fulfillment and joy in. As I know, many of our workspaces are restricting to different elements that we also enjoy. I mean, uh, I don't only enjoy being uh, being an accountant, so maybe mm-hmm. think about what else you like to do. If you play sports, there's a lot of coaches needed in rural areas. Um, there's sporting initiatives and yeah, there's always a way that you can help. So, and how you also said, serving others is serving yourself. So. It just it's it's um, it just takes us out of ourselves as well. We become so internally focused, um, and so many people, you know, I think again going back to what Geraldine was saying yesterday, and even some of my own personal experience, when I'm focusing on my own inner wounds. And I'm turning inward into my wounds. I haven't got any capacity to to actually mm. to to give of any give of myself to somebody else because my focus is so inward. But the irony of that is, is that the moment I turn my focus outwardly, is that's when the wounds start to heal. So so many people are stuck in their wounds and not knowing how to get out of them. You talked about some of the experiences that the youth have been through. I think we have. I actually read something in an article the other day which really blew my mind. Um, it was two words that came to, to um, came up to the surface of this, this particular article. And they spoke about rage consciousness. And I'm going, but that's exactly as far as where we are as mm-hmm. a human race. Not just here in South Africa. Around the world, we are steeped in rage consciousness. And rage yeah. comes from our unfulfillment. Unfulfilled desire. It comes from um, unfulfilled um wishes, dreams, hopes, the way that life does, hasn't turned out the way we want it. It comes from the scarcity mindset and thinking. And yet, what is the opposite of rage consciousness? It's a consciousness of fearing and giving. Um, and that's and really, we couldn't be in a better continent to, to actually take that out into the world again. Sorry, mm-hmm. carry on. No, I just wanted to share a personal story, and I think many South Africans can say they've seen even worse. I... And it's definitely not mentioned for any sympathy whatsoever, but just how I've been able to deal with my own hurts. I faced a lot of um, 
sexual inappropriate behavior by um, old, older men when I was younger, and I didn't understand it. I knew it was wrong, but I blamed myself immediately. Mm-hmm. Later on, um, actually just last year, I was in a coffee shop in Johannesburg, three o'clock in the afternoon, and there was a shooting that happened there. Immediately when I phoned my parents afterwards to tell them what happened, seeking comfort, they asked me, what area was this in? Blaming me and my choices that I made. And I was like, area. It's actually in the same street as a police station. I could take no more responsibility of it. And I became very quiet, blaming myself for many mistakes and so on. And... Only when I started serving in different spaces, I started serving with rape victims that I myself got the voice to speak out to. When I started serving with um, people who've recently been treated um, with depression and anxiety um, on campuses, speaking to you of how are you going to manage this because external pressure is going to come again. Like, how will you deal with it as I faced myself post-traumatic stress at that time and not even able to identify it? Mm-hmm. Um, it really is a beautiful way of how you learn from other people. And we must start telling these stories again, start mm-hmm. making our voices known. And I think that that's also what people realize and they want to be heard. And I, I think it's also a desperate urge for those in leadership, let it be government, let it be um, institutions and whatever platform, to hear people on the ground because everybody makes part of this community and everybody has the right to flourish in their life too. Mm. You're giving me an idea so, so, of a campaign that we can build and, and linking it back to Choose to Give is around the plea and the request that I'm hearing underneath what you're saying is Give me the space to be heard. Mm, Definitely. And And I would love to discuss that with you offline too, to develop as I feel it's needed. And that's also what promotes a lot of protest action in the country Mm. where people are like, are you hearing me? And we look at it and we're like, oh, you've been protesting outside um, of the United Nations building um, for three weeks now, but refugees are asking, are you hearing me? Three weeks are clearly not enough then. So I was at a, um, I was at BITS campus a couple of weeks ago. We were t- taking the Choices game for small business, um, or the variation for small business to BITS campus the other day. Oh, it was about two months ago. And one of the students who was kind of very vocal about this and kind of really, really militant, and I was at BITS um, myself, so kind of it was a weird day. But anyway, he came up and I said to him, so why do you choose to go into the activist space and to want to burn stuff and, you know, make sure that your memorandums are being received and all of those things, but doing it from a point of view of, of almost violence? He said, because it's the only way that people listen. Because mm. they don't listen prior to us having to take radical action. Um, mm. And if that's the reason why things like schools are burned down, community centers are burned down, because nobody's listening, then it's an indictment on the whole uh, way we structure ourselves as a society today. Um, And I really like the idea of give me the space to be heard, um, particularly for our youth, um, because they get shut down. I sat sat listening to a dialogue earlier on this year at Youth Week um, where some young women out of the, the, the audience were asking questions of some of these key players, and I won't mention where they came from, um, around the unemployment rates, around the fact that youth have such a difficult time in terms of getting experience, getting their learnership hours, all of those things. Um, and the, the answers back were from the old guard, from the old system. They never heard what these young women were saying to them, mm. and I think that that's the whole point, the frustration of not being heard um, is something that what we're saying in terms of choose to give is give the space for somebody just to be heard. Because out of being yeah. heard, we start to create solutions. And I think that's a really good platform. I want to just kind of bring Tanashi into this because of the radio station and the platform that the radio station creates 
all people's voices to be heard, particularly 1873, in terms of philosophy and the values of the, of the station itself. Tanashi? Yes, um, uh, Nandi, this one is to you. When you look at uh, active citizenship and when you look at responsible citizenship, uh, do you think that there is a, a difference uh, between the two? Uh, yes, I definitely think there's a difference. Uh, we spoke now recently about protest action too. It can be something from, I can be burning down a school and being active in making my voice heard, but is that responsible? And when we think about the future, that starts shaping our actions um, as being responsible rather than just active. Anybody can make noise, but it depends on how are we mm. going to use these voices. Um, to act, yeah, and also we constantly need to think, what has happened? I think that's also a main part that NGOs need to play. If you've seen that resources are mismanaged, if you see a project is not creating the type of platform or reaching the people that it's supposed to reach, to evaluate it constantly, to also keep up with time to make sure that the optimal people are being benefited from this platform. And, and when you look at just the aspect of civics, civics literacy, would you agree that uh, civics illiteracy is pervasive? Do you mind repeating the question? I couldn't hear. Uh, do you agree that civics illiteracy is pervasive? I think literacy is important, but more important is um, teaching one another that you matter and that your voice matters. Um, that's that's what's creating a dialogue of, listen, you and I are in this together, creating a sense of harmony and creating a sense of care once more to give. And do you agree that when we say, uh, as members of the 1873 network, that we are created equal and endowed uh, by the creator with certain unalienable rights and no, no shared understanding actually exists uh, in, about the place and role of citizens in delivering the promise of uh, inclusive growth? I definitely think that we were created by the Creator or equally. However, our circumstances that we've been born into has displaced this, um, this equality. I, for example, being born in apartheid as a white, um, as in a white middle class family, I've definitely had a lot of more privileges than my black peers. However, it's understanding that now because of this privilege, I again have an opportunity to give back and to know that it does not take of me, it would not make me less, but rather would allow more people to also flourish in their different environments. Um, and yeah, ultimately our all all of our goals as every human on earth would be to live in a peaceful society and to enjoy peace together. There's not one human that can say they don't want to experience peace. Mm -hmm. And we need to be reminded like, of this, that peace is not an ideal, but is really possible. Mm. See, and what comes with that um, is the fact that it is giving off myself selflessly without yes. strings attached, without expectations, without, because I've done this, then I deserve that. Um, mm, that's definitely. Um, I, I go and listen to Deepak Chopra this morning. He talks about it being third, you know, the third level of consciousness. Um, when we start speaking with um, our more um, creator-driven and creator-directed energies around linking to, to the world of spirit, um, it takes mm. and changes the entire nature of the conversation. Um, Tanashi, um, part of what I was um, looking at picking up with, Na with Nandi is the power of radio. Um, going back to where we were talking about um, giving the space to be heard and how radio is such a powerful platform for that to happen. Come again, I didn't get that. Saying that um, when we were talking about giving the voice to be heard, Yes. How radio is such a powerful platform for voices to be heard. 
Uh, absolutely, and uh, that's uh, hence uh, the, even the conversation that we are having at the end of the day is uh, for our voice, for individuals' voices to be heard, a voice, uh, for, uh, the voice of Nandi to be heard, and particularly, I mean, Nandi, if we were to look at uh, our civilization in itself, if we were to just imagine a civilization without human choices, would you want to be part of this uh, civilization that doesn't allow human choices? Do you mind repeating? Uh, can you imagine a civilization without uh, human choices? Would you want to be part of uh, this kind of civilization? No, I think that's that's the beauty of it that we have free will. However, we need to take we need to think what am, have I learned from my past to constantly build to be better, not only for yourself but better for creation as a whole, because we are so inter, interwoven, not only with one another and um, man to man, but also man to nature. And we need to even be responsible with the way that we're taking care of other resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when, when you look at uh, the role of uh, individuals in as far as uh, uh, the aspect of uh, making choices is concerned. Do you agree that choice is a right of nature? Choice is a right of nature. Um, do you mind elaborating before I comment first? Uh, that uh, 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 the the right uh, to when you look at uh, the values of the 1873 uh, network, when you say the right to life, the right to liberty the right uh, to pursuit of happiness. When you talk of uh, uh, right to liberty, that in itself is uh, a uh, the, uh, the right to choose what you want for yourself. And that right is a God, uh, it, it, it's, it's a gift of nature. It, it's, not a, it's not something that another individual can give you mm. or can deny you. Yeah, no, definitely, I agree with that. And I think that we should remind one another of this gift. I think it also comes back to the fact that choice is a fundamental spiritual law. Um, mm -hmm. Choices have consequences, either positive or negative. Um, choices have, um, we have rights, we have responsibilities when we exercise in choice. Um, and that for me um, is one of the things that's abjectly missing, is that we don't have a context and understanding of what choice truly means. Um, and so when we start to talk back to choose to give, um, mm. Again, it's behind, implied behind the giving. So there's the giving, there's the abundance law and lesson of giving. But there's also the fact that giving is a choice. And um, if I don't give, there's a consequence. If I do give, there is a consequence. You spoke quite eloquently just now about the difference between active citizenship and responsible citizenship. And that you make a choice to be an active citizen and burn down a school with severe consequences for all the learners in the school versus being a responsible citizen and perhaps taking a class of kids um, and helping them with their homework. Same situation, think, different choice, different outcome. Definitely. And we also be we need to be reminded of even those that we've been born to make choices ourselves. Society, over years, we've seen through history that many people were deprived of exercising also choices. Mm -hmm. I mean women being deprived of voting for generations, slavery, um, even in South Africa, the apartheid system. So when we exercise also choices that we make, that it must be responsible, but also made in gratitude to say, listen, I'm grateful to be able to make this choice. So let me make it responsibly. Um, let me also do, do so by showing a conscious, consciousness to say, I'm thinking about creation bigger than simply my um, immediate environment, my immediate self. Yeah, I think that that's very powerful. Um, Tanashi, um, would you like to talk a little bit about the points of light? So, yes, um, Nandi, each day when we have these conversations, the idea is to uh, uh, get towards uh, the 10,000 
points of light under the banner banking on Africa's future. So we are building this bank of 10,000 people and as Angela's nominee, nominee, would you have any objection if I were to deposit your name in this prestigious bank or under the banner above 10,000 points of light? No, definitely not. I'll just be honored. Well, I'm excited for uh, accepting uh, the nomination and uh, more importantly, I also look forward uh, to you adding more names to this uh, bank of ours as we seek uh, each day to uh, collaborate in as far as um, being active in securing the kind of future that we all want collectively. Definitely. And Tanasia, thank you so much for providing also such a platform with Angela and I think the world really needs this. So thank you for creating such a space for a beautiful conversation. Well, it's people like yourself who add their voices, who allow such platforms uh, to be uh, more, much more visible and people to also to get to uh, ignite, to be ignited, to mm -hmm. be active citizens, to be responsible citizens. I think the yeah. same exists within everybody that has that desire to have an impact outside and greater than the self. We simply have to remind one another that that is possible. Oh. Um, absolutely. And I think, you know, just to sum it up, and sum it because you've, you've put a lot of richness into the dialogue and discussion today, for me, what I'm taking out of what you said today is that when we come back to hashtag choose to give, it's not only giving of ourselves, our time, our energy of, and, and our resources, it's also the giving of understanding and the giving of a space to be heard. Um, and within that, the choice for people to grow, to learn, to flourish, mm. and to become all of who they're meant to be in terms of contributing to the building of our nation. Definitely. Thank you so much, Nandi, for, for your consciousness and for what you've brought into the discussion today. It's been a very rich dialogue, and I'm very grateful for your contribution. Well, thank you. Angela, I'm eternally grateful, and I look forward to continue this conversation also off, off air to see how we can really impact our society together. And, and Fantastic. Nandi, Nandi, before I let you go, over, what's the name of your organization? So I'm currently not affiliated to one specific organization, and I myself don't have my own organization. As I've mentioned earlier, I just enrolled again to study next year, but I do volunteer actively with various organizations. And I would encourage everybody to go and have a look to find where their passion is. For example, my passion has been largely um, focusing when I study politics and also focusing on religious conflict in Africa. I got introduced to an organization called HWPL, which has largely been able to um, engage with interfaith dialogue, so also enriching myself spiritually through hearing that type of dialogue and engaging with the different religious leaders. And what's your email address? My email address, my personal one, is nandibest at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you so much. And I can gladly advise anybody to different NGOs and contact details of those NGOs, um, not only in Gauteng, but around South Africa, if any of them wish. Fantastic. Thank you once again, and wish you a lovely day ahead, and uh, all the best in your studies. Thank you so much. I really appreciate every time. You are welcome. And and Tanashi, thank you again for a really robust and engaging conversation. And I will catch you again tomorrow. Thank you, Angela. You have a lovely day, Feather. And you can. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, goodbye for now. All right, it is uh, the Santon Express morning show. Yes, uh, I do hope that you are finding uh, the conversations insightful, also informative. And yes, glad to know that uh, Viola is also tuned in and following the conversation. I hope that uh, you are doing well in your studies in as far as the exams that you are uh, uh, undertaking at the moment. Uh, best wishes to all those who are also uh, writing their exams in any field. Uh, that they happen to be uh, taking uh, taking upon. And on that note, uh, we go on a quick break. Keep it locked on your channel of choice, the 1873 FM, your voice, your power. Sounds of the 1873 United Artists with a trick titled, uh, We Are Starting With Us.
Children of this bed has made it very clear that we won't just let words go in from ear to ear and leave no effect. Pay attention, don't neglect, because knowledge is wealth and we need it to progress. Eventually, we, 1873, will have Africa become what we expected to be. The progressive society that we're destined to be, and we plan on making it happen exceptionally. The feeling of despair and hopelessness that is everywhere has made it so clear that we can go on pretending not to see that knowledge holds the power, knowledge holds the promise, and you need to know. Nobody can do it better than us Cause God has blessed us with the gift of life We are starting with us We are starting with us If we want to make Africa Inclusive and progressive society We are starting with us If we want to make Africa And inclusive Oh, we're starting with us. The time has come finally. We're making Africa a prosperous society. This serves to diminish your anxiety. You need some privacy. You should take some time to breathe. To be alive, you need to be the risk. And that's the difference. Give assistance regardless of the resistance. Nobody can do better than us. We're gifted. We can provide music to make a difference. Combine recipes and become the perfect mixture. In my mind, can paint the perfect picture. Though it's far away, I really think it's worth the distance. United Africa, time to revert the system. Yeah, it's worth the distance. It's time to revert the system. Yeah, I think it's worth the distance. It's time to revert the system. Through the Agent 73 network, we are going to make a difference. Through knowledge and execution, capital by connecting, equipping and inspiring. Hey, no one can do it better than us. God has given and blessed us with the gift of life. Let us use the gift to make a difference.